Welcome to USMLE Sarti. We are committed to empowering IMGs. We're excited to guide you on your match journey. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever we add new content. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest tips and tricks regarding everything USMLE. Now, let's dive okay. into it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our channel. I am Shayla, the VP of Student Success here at USMLE Sarti. And with me, I have our chief mentor, Puan Kira. Hi, Puan. How are you doing? Good, good. And excited to start this new series. Yeah, thank you. Me too. So we just wrapped up a series last year about all of the things that you should be doing. We went month by month through the whole year, what you should do, what pieces to remember and make sure nothing gets forgotten. So check out that series um, to cover month by month your strategy for the whole year. Uh, now we are starting, as Puan mentioned, a new series we're calling Minutes to Match, where we'll answer your questions about a certain topic. So excited to get started on that. Puan, what's our topic today? So, you know, importance of research, is that really important? Does it matter? And if yes, then what can you do? Perfect. And we do have an upcoming webinar where we'll answer more questions about this topic as well, but I'm excited to talk about a few of the important pieces today. Sure. Okay, so we'll get jumping in here. These are questions from students that we've gotten before, um, and we look forward to answering all those. So I'll jump in here. First question is, why is research important for IMGs? Yeah, so great question. You know, a uh, couple of years ago, step one went pass fail. There used to be a CS exam that is no longer there. So IMGs need to differentiate themselves. So other than CK and maybe step three, research is a good tool because research gives you very quantifiable outcomes in terms of publication. So that's one reason why research is important. It can boost your ERA CV, you know, when you show research publications, and also in the interviews, you can talk about them. It helps you network also if you go to conferences, say in neurology, pathology, even internal medicine or any of the subspecialties, you can actually discuss your research in the conferences. So it helps you network. And of course, uh, it does help you compensate for weak areas. Could be some red flag, maybe year of graduation, maybe low step score. So it helps uh, compensate for all of that. Perfect. I think that summarizes it. Great. So how can IMGs find research opportunities in the U.S.? Right. So I would say start in your home country if you're still a student. So especially like in India and other countries, there are uh, government funded, federal funded projects you can get to. So in India, there is something called ICMR. Uh, but yes, when you are looking for projects in the U.S., uh, there can be full-time research opportunities, and then there can be part-time or online research opportunities. For finding full-time research opportunities, and we help our students in this, uh, there are all these universities, great universities and institutes like Harvard, Hopkins, Mayo Clinic, and all of that. So you have to individually approach these universities, the faculty, look at their profile, who has the funding. So it can be uh, very daunting because you need to send hundreds of emails and we have many videos on that. So that would be one way to look at uh, or look for these research opportunities. The other way, if you don't have time um, and maybe you don't get visa is the online research. So we work with a lot of faculty who uh, do solid research and you can participate, you can join these research opportunities, and they'll help you publish. So that's one way to do it. Of course, networking goes a long way. You know, your med school senior, maybe someone you know has a research project that you can get involved in. And those are some of the ways to get research. But remember, if you're looking for full-time research opportunities that, given the visa, complication and all could take up to three to four months. So you really have to plan that well in advance. Otherwise, online research is not a bad option. Perfect. I'm glad there's lots of options out there. Uh, so what type of research should IMGs focus on? Um, is it Does it make a difference for old grad versus more recent grads? What type yes, should they So it, it does. So one, I want to classify research in terms of the type of output and then the type of actual research. So output can be, uh, you know, a case report. If you saw an interesting case, you write about it, case report or case series, 
the other could be sending abstracts or uh, posters for presentations you know conferences that's the second type the third is full fledged manuscript where you know you a very very detailed paper so we help in all of that Th that's one way of looking at the research the other way is the type of research so you could be involved in clinical research maybe say clinical trial data gathering analysis it takes a long time but that's one way to do it basic sciences you know you may work in a lab uh, that kind of a thing so that's the other kind of research and and maybe so these are wet labs and then there is say you get a research position at may or cleveland clinic the data already exists so you analyze that uh, chart reviews etc publish those so one is the based on the output of the research the other is the type of research so uh, if you are a recent graduate i i think posters abstracts uh, maybe even case reports case series can work well uh, if you have red flags older biogs you know maybe 3 to 5 years then the more uh, you know on manuscripts etc will will help you so more more research experience more research experience yep great Okay, so what are some of the challenges? We talked a little bit about how to find it, but what are some of the challenges that IMGs face when it comes to research and how can they overcome those challenges? Yes, so one of the biggest challenges is the lack of uh, actual knowledge of what to do and getting that kind of a training. You know, uh, we have a lot of students who interview for these research positions and it turns out that, you know, knowledge of the statistical tools or uh, you know, how do you gather the data? Some of these things IMGs don't know because they have not been trained into that. So one way to overcome this challenge is there are a lot of free courses that you can do or, you know, you join courses that we offer and you can actually get this kind of a training. So training on the tools and methodologies is one thing. The second, of course, is, uh, you know, looking for these research position on site so there could be complications of visa so that's another challenge uh, the third frankly is um, limitation of time so now we are say nine to ten months before we submit the raz application in september and research needs time especially if you are doing full time so these are some of the challenges that um, many imgs face perfect Okay, we actually only have one more question left um, regarding research for now. So I just wanted to remind you that we do have a webinar coming up. We'll answer more questions, talk a lot more about research and how it helps. Um, but with that, our last question is talking more about specialties. So which specialty do you feel like maybe prioritizes more research? Which ones maybe don't need research? And why is that important when it comes to specialty specific research? Yeah, so... Uh, you know, the type of specialty and the focus it has on research differs. It does not mean that uh, any specialty does not value research, but some do it more than others. So if I talk of uh, IMG-friendly specialties, neurology, pathology, even internal medicine, uh, really, really value research. And we'll talk more about it in the upcoming webinar in terms of the actual number of experiences and, and publications as per the NRMP research. So these three, and, and then you could say that family medicine, probably not this much, pediatrics, not that much as opposed to these other three, uh, but still research is important for these. Now, when you come to surgical specialties, say orthopedics, general surgery, plastic surgery, there is an order of magnitude difference, you know, so a lot and lot of research, especially in the US setting. So yes, uh, the importance of research does vary by specialty. And in IMG friendly specialties, it's IM, neurology, pathology, even path psychiatry is looking at research now uh, more than others. And then if you are interested in surgical specialty, then it's a different ball game. Even more so. Uh, to go along with that, just a piggyback question. Does it matter if, say, I'm going into IM and I have psychiatry research? Does a specialty matter? So, you know, uh, if let's say you have 10 publications, just throwing out a number, uh, 10 publication, eight in psychiatry, two in IM, and you're applying to IM, the programs will question your commitment because they will feel that you are interested in psychiatry. So, uh, 
you know, it does matter if you really are committed to research. So, but, you know, one or two publications, I think they're okay because the, the methodology and uh, the research frameworks remain the same. S try to stay closer to your specialty. So, for example, applying to IM, but you have uh, all your research in plastic surgery is not going to help you. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. I feel like that gave us a pretty good summary of... Uh, research for IMGs, why it's important, how to get it. So make sure to enroll in our webinar that is upcoming. We're excited to guide you more. Um, Puan, anything else you wanted to add? No, I, I think we'll uh, open up more questions. We'll, uh, you know, post the link to ask questions. So as we get more questions in the next part of the series, we'll answer those. Right. Make sure to share this video with your friends and send us your questions so we can answer them next time. Thanks, everybody. Yep. All right. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.